nothing against Purdue, but they didn't stand a chance. Nobody the last two years seemingly does. In the American basketball culture, which is absolutely, unequivocally, inarguably fallen behind Europe's, which often in America celebrates the wrong thing that coddles more than develops, it's very, very difficult to stay focused and fight through that American basketball culture. And UConn does better than everybody. They keep basketball the main thing. They grind their players, hold them accountable, yet the players love it. The players lean into it because great players in great programs want to be coached hard. UConn stands alone at the top of college basketball's mountain, six titles, 25 years. Everything in their program is done right. They use the NIL and the transfer portal, but they don't rely on it. Their coaching's probably the best in the country. They play tough physical basketball, old Big E style. They can have old school centers and new school guards and wings. Everything they do is the way college basketball, and I think America really likes it, some old school and some three-pointers. It is a completely relentless program. And Dan Hurley, the coach, is the perfect guy. Authentic, just snarky East Coast enough, fits the program and the culture, absolutely committed in a world of TikTok, in a world of a lot of sizzle over substance, in a world of headlines over actually reading the article, UConn is the movie Oppenheimer, a historic three-hour movie about the atom bomb, and it swept through the awards. Barbie was cute, fun, people dressed up, silly. No big, splashy adventure movie. No big movie star, former wrestler, nothing against rock. But the reality is UConn basketball is a serious program that attracts serious people to its program. And Dan Hurley is perfect for that. He's not worried about how he looks, got his hoodie in his office. The first big shot of the second half. UConn never loses when they lead at half, ever. They were 47-0 going into last night's game. When they led 36-30 at half, Newton comes down, hits a three, and I'm thinking 39-30, it's over. We're just playing out the string here. It's over. The game's officially over. And that's the way it is against UConn most of the last two years. Maybe this program, it, it just maybe wouldn't work out west we have our good weather and options. Maybe it wouldn't work in the South or the Midwest, but it works in the East. It works in Connecticut. It works in stores. I mean, outside of Zach Eady, no other player. They had, you know, five points was your next big score for Purdue, I believe. And I don't blame them. Zach Eady's great. He's fantastic. I'll get to him in a second. But what you're watching is a combination of old school basketball Old school coaching, but new school smart. Using the portal, using NIL. A lot of transfers here, but not depending on it. I think it's a joy to watch. Maybe it's because I lived there for 10 years, but I know how much it means to the area. And it's just a relentless program that squeezes every ounce of talent out of every coach, out of every player, out of every transfer, serious people like serious companies and programs. And that's what UConn's all about. Now to Zach Eady, Purdue's dominant seven foot four center who had another dominating night. And I was thinking about what Dan Hurley said on our show about a week ago. If Zach Eady doesn't work in the NBA, maybe that's why the NBA has lost half its audience since Michael Jordan retired. Every team in the NBA uses the same analytics, the same data. They play the exact same way. Aesthetically, kind of boring. Dunks and threes, that's it. The American audience told you, men's and women's college basketball, we like some old school stuff. Caitlin Clark, does she feel like Hoosiers, the underdog? Zach Eady feels like, you know, old school centers. 
Everybody in the NBA plays the same way. And then Minnesota, the Timberwolves said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to get two seven-footers. And the T-Wolves are the number one seed in the West. They broke through. By the way, Spurs did this once. David Robinson, Tim Duncan. Houston did this. Akeem and Ralph Sampson. Minnesota said, no, we're not, we're not just going to do the small ball thing. We're going to go the opposite. We're going to get Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns. I mean, let me ask you this. Zach Eady got two UConn bigs in foul trouble all night. Scored 37 points against the guy that's going to go in the NBA draft. Is every big in the NBA scoring 37 last night? Zubots, who averages 12 a game for the Clippers, old school center. You think he's scoring 37 last night and getting both of UConn bigs in foul trouble? I mean, I don't know. I watched that game. Nobody's blocking that shot. Seven foot four, 300 pounds, and the dude is ripped. He played more minutes than anybody in the tournament. That's not... <laughs> that, that, that there are abs. He's a seven foot four guy, 300 pounds with abs. He is ripped. He's not going anywhere. Well, he can't defend the wing. Is Anthony Davis a great wing defender? Are all these bigs in the NBA outside of Wemby great wing defenders? I don't know. But in the NBA, and I've heard people in the league complain about this, every team uses the same data and the same analytics. And it's like, Denver's better than everybody, and before that, Golden State was better than everybody. Minnesota said, we're going to try something new. We're going to go with bigs. One guy doesn't even score much, Rudy Gobert. The other guy's a little flaky, Carl Anthony Towns. They're the number one seed in the West, and that's with Carl Anthony Towns hurt, hopefully coming back. So I don't know. I look at Zach Eady, driven, tough, smart, finishes, block shots. I mean, it's like Caitlin Clark. Don't judge Caitlin Clark and Zach Eady. On the final college basketball game they play and they lost. They're just different. They look different. And again, Zach Eady last year, I remember when Tim Tebow was in college. And I watched him as an under underclassman. And then I watched him his final year. And it was the same guy. It was the same game. Slow delivery. Didn't have a great arm. Raw, raw optimism. It was the same guy. Zach Eady's not the same player he was a year ago. <laughs> He's not. He's a better finisher. He's in better shape. He's more relentless. I mean, how many players have won multiple Naismiths? Bill Walton, Ralph Sampson, Zach Eady. <laughs> it says something, doesn't it? Dan Hurley's game plan was, yeah, we're not going to be able to stop him. And they've got an NBA center. Mark Few came on this show and said, I've been doing this 25 years. I've never, I've never faced anybody like that. We, we can't stop him. Really? I mean, when Dan Hurley acknowledges, stop the other guys. Uh, we've got an NBA center. Just stop the other guys. He's going to get his 40. I don't know. Hurley said it a week ago. If he doesn't make the NBA, this is supposed to be the weakest draft ever. Like, like the Anthony Bennett draft. And you're telling me he can't be a top 15 pick? <laughs> I don't get it. Like if, if the audience is telling you we like basketball, we just don't want everything to be a three or a dunk. Michael Jordan was a mid-range player. Magic Johnson wasn't a great shooter. LeBron's hot and cold. Yes, yeah, Steph Curry is, but I don't know. When I watch Zach Eady at 7'4 against NBA guys, getting them all in foul trouble and dropping 37, and Mark Few's like, yeah, there's just really no way to defend him. I can't believe there's not a spot in pro basketball for him. Somewhere. There are old school centers playing right now in the NBA, averaging double figures. He can't be one of them. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.